And that was nice and easy. Now we have our nav bar. And next, I think we can start working on the rest of the pages. And we know that we're going to have the home page. We're going to have the recipes page as well as we're going to have single recipe and default one. And I think we can start working with the home page. And as we can see, we are going to have a massive banner image here with some kind of title as well as the button. And technically, we could build this in a home page. There would be nothing wrong with that. However, I would like to create this as a component where we can reuse this. Let's say in a different page, you would want a different image with different kind of text, maybe different kind of button or some kind of different children altogether. Why don't we create it as a component? And that way we can reuse it all throughout our application. In our case, we're going to use it only on a default as well as the home one. But in general, in your application, you can use it in many pages as you would like. Okay, what are we having right now? Well, we have the components. So why don't we create a new component? I'm going to call this header and I will going to zoom in for this guy. I'm going to say that I'm going to call this file header, header JS to be more precise. And then within the header JS, we're going to set up a function. So I'm going to say RFC. That's going to be our function based component. And now in this case, I can zoom out already, I think, because you saw everything that was happening. So in that case, once we zoom out, then I also going to undo it, what I just did. And you know what? I will going to head over back to app.js. And within the app.js, I would like to import it. So for that, we're just going to say the sidebar is going to be closed. We're going to import. And no, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm not going to be importing in app.js. I just told you that I'm going to be working with this in the home JS, And yet, for some reason, I'm working in app.js. My apologies. So we're going to head over to the pages. And then I'm going to be having this header JS within my home page. Obviously, later on, we're going to set up with the default as well. So the default page is also going to have this banner slash header. But in this case, we're just going to look for header. And this would be from the components. So again, we're going to be leaving the folder of the pages. We're going to go to the components. And then we're going to have the header component. And you know what? within the heading four, we're going to delete the heading four, and we're just going to pass right now header without any children without any titles, any of the props that we're going to be setting up. Now, at the moment, it's complaining, it's fine. We will need to head over to app js, we're just going to save it, we're going to close it, I can close the sidebar, I can also say for the header that I will going to start returning something. And why don't we start with very simple by adding one hello, from header. And let's see how this is going to work. And I think it works really well, since we do have something shown on the screen. And as we're moving on, like I said, I would want this component to be reusable. So I would like to pass it the props, which later on when we're going to be rendering, let's say in home, or in default, we can pass a different prop. And then we're going to have a different rendering options. So in this case, I'm going to say there's going to be some children. So we're always going to be able to pass them children. Then there's going to be a title prop, which will be responsible for this text, as well as we're going to pass the style class. And you'll see why we're using the style class. The short answer would be how this is going to be styled. So what kind of image, what kind of height, and so on and so forth. So depending on that, we're going to be able to style it on each and every page a little bit differently. That's the whole point why we're having this as a component. Okay, so we have our basics. Then I'm going to say that there's going to be a header. So I'm going to be returning the header and within the header, not head, header. And then within the header, again, we're going to start working with a bootstrap. So I think I told you in a previous project for sure, where for bootstrap, there's going to be two containers that wrap everything around. One would be container and the other one is going to be container fluid. What container fluid does, it makes sure that there is no padding here on left hand side or right hand side. So it takes up the whole screen as well as this is not responsive in a sense that container is going to be responsive with the screen. So as the screen size is going to be changing, also the container is going to be responsive, but container fluid is just going to take up the whole space regardless of the screen size. So we would want this guy, the container fluid. And then within the container fluid, we're going to start working with the row as well as we're going to have some columns. However, for a row, we're going to have to do a little bit interesting. Not only we're going to pass the class name for the row, but we're going to set it up here 
that we can pass our style class within this class name. And that's the reason why I set it up here, where I can actually access it with a template literals, and I can use the variable that comes with template literals. So I'm going to say style class, and this is going to be responsible again for the image, how big it is, and all that. That's going to be our special class that each and every time we can set it up a little bit differently. However, we do still need to have the class name of row for the row, as well as we would like to place our items in the center. And we know that in Bootstrap, there's a class align items center class, and that's going to place everything in the center. That's the reason for these classes. And this one is going to make a little bit more sense as we work in CSS. So for now, just go with it, and you'll see in a second why we're doing that. And then I also would like to have a column. And the column is where our text is going to be. So there's going to be a div with a class of column, as well as text center. So all the text within this heading one, that's going to be our next one, is going to be in the center. As well as let's do heading one. And let's add some classes to it. So in this case, I will going to start with text light. So it's going to be kind of hard to see what we're typing. But the moment we're going to add CSS, everything is going to be working fine. So let's say text on per case, that's going to be the setup. Then obviously, this is going to set up the text to be all caps. And then we'll have display three, which is going to make the text bigger, as well as we're going to add remember the class that we created all the way in the beginning for the letter spacing while we're adding that class right now, as well as text slanted for the fonts that came slanted. That's the reason for we're adding this class. And then within the heading one, this is where we're going to be passing the title. Again, depending on a page, this title is going to change. So that way we can make this component reusable. As well as right after the heading one, we will going to have the actual children. And I didn't want to make a comment. So and I didn't want to for sure have two side by side windows. So let me close that. And let's say that I'm going to avoid the comment. And this is where we're going to be placing the children. Because the idea is very simple. So I would like always to have some kind of title here where this will going to be passed as a prompt. However, let's say for one page, I would want some more text and maybe no button. Then for one page, for the home page, I would want the button. So that's the reason why I'm setting up this children where for each and every page, we can add whatever we would like. And I also would like to add some default props because at the moment that I'm looking at it, okay, so I'm getting these props, but why don't I set up something where for each and every time, if I'm not going to be adding any kind of props, at least something is going to be displayed. And we know that we can work with default props. So header, then default props, that was the name. And then we're going to set it up for the title. So two props that I'm looking for is title and style class. So I'm going to say title. And in this case, there's just going to be some text. So default title. And for the style class, we haven't again created the class, but we we're going to do it in a second. So I'm going to say style class. And then we're going to call this header hero. And we are going to be heading over to app CSS in a second to create it. We could technically see the text. By the way, if I go over it, you can see that this was going to be my default title. So I know that my default props are working. Now I just need to work on the style class, the one that I'm going to be creating myself, and it's going to be displayed for each and every time I'm going to be using this header component. And why don't I close the component right now? I don't need it anymore. I mean, if you want it for your own reference, obviously keep it open. But in my case, I'm going to close it. And then we're going to head over to app CSS, where I would like to create that class. And remember, the class was header hero. So I'm going to say over in the app CSS, and we would want to start working with this class. Now, the class is very simple. I would want to have the background for this hero component and then or header component. And then I would like to add some kind of image as a background. So I'm going to say class of header hero. And by the way, you know what? Let's close the sidebar. And we're going to say that first of all, we'd want a background. So very simple. We're just going to have the URL. We know that this is how we can set up the background as an image. However, we also know that my images are sitting where? Well, I have the images folder. That's the one that came with the setup. And then I have two images. One is default and the other one is home. Now, the default one is going to be for default page and the home one is going to be for the home page. And here I'm going to say, OK, so I'm going to be looking for the actual file. 
and now I'd leave to CSS or I'm sorry, not leave the CSS. Now I'm going to be still within the source folder and then I'm going to be looking for my images. And then with the images, I have right away an option of home BCG or the default BCG. Now let's save this. This is going to be my background. And at the moment, at least we have something. Now there's things we need to add, of course, but at least I have some kind of image. I already know that I can start controlling this image by saying center. So image is always going to be center. The image is always going to be covering the div. And we're also going to be doing no repeat. And that's going to set up the image. However, there's probably a little bit bigger issue right now where the image is not taking all the space that I would want. And for that, we're going to set up the property of min height. For the min height, what I'm saying is regardless of whatever content you have within, I would want this div or whatever you're styling here with this header hero or with this min height in general to be at least some kind of height. And for this, I could just say 100 view heights. And let's see how this is going to work. So now this image is going to be massive. However, there's still something I would like to fix. So let me refresh my application. I can see that it's working. This is going to be obviously my big screen. But what I would like is for the nav bar, as well as for the image to take up exactly 100% of the screen. As you can see right now, I don't scroll here. In my final application, everything is exactly 100%. So how do we do that? First of all, we can check how much is the nav bar. That is kind of important where we have the inspect. And then we're going to see, okay, elements. So I have the nav bar element. And as I'm looking on the top, I can see that it's 1280 by 56. So obviously 1280 is the width and 56 is the height. And instead, what I can do is not just say min height. I can say calc, so calc function. And within the calc function, we can just pass to whatever values you would like to calculate. So I'm going to say 100 view heights minus 56 pixels, since that is the height of my nav bar. And by the way, yes, I know that on a small screen, this is not going to work like that, because obviously the nav bar is bigger, and we could set up the media query and all that. But since this is a React, obviously, course, I'm not going to do that. So if you want to do that, do that. I'm just going to skip on that because I think it gives us more than enough when we're looking at the big screen. And if somebody's really bothered about the small screen, you can always go ahead and do that and fix that yourselves. And then I'm also would like to make a little bit darker the image because at the moment I would be looking at it. I could say, you know what? That image is too bright. So the text that I placed here is kind of hard to see. And we can do that by linear gradient. So we're going to use linear gradient and Always, always remember to add this comma. Otherwise, you're going to mess up everything where the syntax is going to be correct and or I'm sorry, incorrect. And then obviously nothing is going to be rendered. And for linear gradient, we can pass two colors. We can pass way more. But in our case, we're just looking for two. And I'm not going to pass the solid color because obviously if I'm going to say red and red, so two solid colors, I'm not going to be able to see anything because my image is going to be gone. So instead, I'm going to use the RGB values, gradient, and I'm going to say RGB. And then we're going to be looking for 0, 0, which is going to be black with, let's say, opacity of 0 0.2. So this is going to have a black color. That's the nifty thing about RGBA, where we can pass the color, but with already some opacity. And we're going to do the same thing here. RGBA, 0, 0, 0. And this is really annoying sometimes with this. Uh, the fact that it uh, kind of wraps and now let's see everything is working fine now maybe let me make this a little bit like smaller and let's see how this is going to be working yeah everything is working well everything is displayed nice and as i'm looking at it i can see that i do have my background if you want to make it darker make it darker if you want to make it lighter make it lighter if you want to use a different color you can use a different color if you want to see how this is going to look with an orange why don't we test it out Let's say that, you know what, for this, I will I'm just going to comment this out. And be before we do that, let me just copy and paste it. And obviously, by the CSS order, this is going to be taking preference anyway, the second one. But just so it doesn't mess up with your head, let me just comment this out. This is going to be my first one. And why don't we change the colors? Why don't we look at the hashtag? Or I'm going to say that this is going to be RGBA. And obviously, I have the option of RGB. And then we can, I don't know, 
make some kind of opacity. And this is gonna be my opacity, and we can just copy and paste these values. Now, in my case, I will gonna set this back. So I'm gonna say not RGB since I have copied and pasted the value anyway. One five zero two five. That's gonna be my value for the orange color. But I'm gonna pass this RGB within my second one, and this is really up to you, however you would like. So this is gonna be my first one, the orange one, and the second one is also gonna be an orange. And now once I save it, now I'm gonna have this orange color. You like the black one? Use the black one. You like the orange one? Use the orange one. I think though this is a little bit too uh, drastic with the opacity. I think we can do 0 0.2 or maybe 3. 3 would also work. Let's see. Let's save it. Yeah, I think 3 is going to be very, very good. Now I can save the app CSS. And this is going to be how our application is going to look like with this header. However, we still haven't worked out of what's happening here with this default title, as well as why we are not having any kind of children. And in order to do that, we're going to have to head over to the home. It's obviously this is where it is being displayed right now, correct? And the way we're going to do that, we're going to head over to the home where we do have the header. And I know that I have the title prop. So I'm going to say title. And within the title, again, we can pass whatever we would like. And in my case, I'm going to say amazing recipes. That's going to be my title. I'm going to save it. And sure enough, since this is a reusable component, my header, I can just pass it here. And I have this amazing recipes. I also would like to add the child because at the moment I have no children and I would like to add the button. I'm not going to add button each and every time the header is going to be displayed. But in this case, I think this is just going to make sense. So for that, we also would like to import the link. So I'm going to say import. The link is going to be imported from the React Router DOM. And then we're going to say, okay, so we're going to be rendering the link. First and foremost, the link is going to be to the recipe. So the two attribute. Is going to point to recipes. Then we're going to also add some class names. So class name is going to be, first of all, text uppercase for the button. So all caps, as well as the button class. This is going to style it as a button. Button secondary is going to be the gray color. Secondary. And then we're going to have button large, since I would want that button to be large. And margin top is going to be three to the top. If you want more bar margin, obviously, you just need to add here margin top, let's say five, and that's your preference. And let's just write that we are going to be looking for search recipes in our button. And yeah, obviously, we right now have our button, and everything is working really well. However, maybe let me go back to the header and kind of go over what's happening with this class. So at the moment, I'm passing the style class, which is by the way, the default one. And that's the reason why we have header here. In the next video, we're going to have a look at what happens in a default one if we pass the class. But probably the biggest takeaway I would like to take you away from the style class and all this setup is the fact that if I have default props, obviously, if I'm going to be passing them, I'm going to be overriding them. But if you are not passing this prop, then you're always going to have this one. So regardless of whether we are having different kind of image or styling, the image is always going to be displayed since we did create the class for it. And that's the reason why this is displayed this way. However, the title, obviously, we're changing. It's not going to be any more default since in the home we passed it. We said, yeah, we would want to be actually a title with amazing recipes. You would want a different title. You can add different title. And last, I guess, the children. The fact that we're passing children again, this is just to customize this. In this case, I'm passing the button. Maybe in different component, I'm going to decide that I will going to use the header, but without a button. So this gives me kind of flexibility where I can pick and choose how I'm going to render it. Now, let's see how this is going to look on a bigger screen. I think it looks really well. We have amazing recipes. This is going to be orange. You can keep it black, as in my final project. It really is really up to you. And we can search recipes. We go to the recipes page, we can go back home. We have our nav. Everything is working fine. And we can start working on our default page.